fun, engaging, and actually fairly challenging. Those are all words I would use to describe the apology of preschool science. Hi guys, Kathleen Lewis here. I'm a homeschool graduate, homeschool mom, and learning enthusiast, and yes, we recently went through the Apology of Preschool Science with my four-year-old. There were several things in this curriculum that surprised me when we went through it this year, so let me break it down for you. Apology is known for curriculum that combines a narrative style textbook with very fun activities. Plus, most of their science curriculums are kind of unit study in the fact that it is one topic one subject area that you spend on for the entire year. So for example, earth science, you spend the entire school year learning it rather than more traditional approaches would be let's do earth science for a month and um, botany for a month and astronomy for a month and so forth. So this preschool science curriculum was different from most of Apology's approaches in the, in the fact that it did hit all of those science subject areas. But I think it's a great introduction, a great foundation for kids for science. This text, again, is very engaging with its narrative format and beautiful pictures. There are some things I do not like about it, so I'll get to those in a bit. Let me turn the camera around so you can see inside of this curriculum. Okay, guys, here is the textbook. We start with the table of contents. In the table of contents, we've got um, God and creation, which is kind of an overview of life. And then we have the planet Earth and the solar system. And then we get into some botany and then zoology and human anatomy. And, and then this chapter here is a physics chapter. And then the last half of the book, this is the first half, all the reading content. The last half of the book here is all of the activities and, and various things that you can do. And they call that the parent's guide. There is no definitive... Um, when to do each activity. They have a suggestion, a reminder as you read along that there's an activity that corresponds to this topic. But once again, there's no schedule with this. You just have to figure out when to stop reading and then do you want to do two activities today or should we just do an activity today and not do any reading? So that is entirely up to you and something you have to figure out. They have the welcome page talking about everything you're going to be doing in here and of course the handy dandy supplies list general supplies, and then um, supplies per, per chapter. So you can at least plan ahead for that. Everyone starts with the first one. So I'm going to skip to God's Garden, the botany chapter. The book has beautiful photos, which I have comments on later about those specifically. So stick around to hear about that. The text is a very narrative format, um, engaging and have questions like here. Do you know what else seeds need to grow? Trying to get your kids input. They have, as I said, activities placed throughout telling you there's something you can do corresponding to this topic. So you'll have to watch for that. And then beyond that, I think it's a very good structure, discussion. So they start with what a plant is, and then we get into seeds. And then the basic parts of plants, roots, stems. Um, and then when we get to leaves, the discussion of photosynthesis, which I was actually very impressed that they had a discussion of photosynthesis in here without actually using that term. So they described that the plant gets energy from the sun and um, kind of the very rough outline of all of that process. So they do have some non-preschool topics in here, which I was actually very surprised and happy with. And then of course, flowers and, um, and then this chapter ends with basic zones and ecosystems of where you could find various plants. Now let's get to the activities that go along with that chapter. You see some things like this where you rip this out and then go out into nature to be a detective. You have a coloring page. Um, you have an activity where you actually walk in socks to try to pick up seeds and um, then instead of having you actually grow a seed, they have some weird preschool coloring, cutting and pasting type activities. They have apple tasting, they have a craft here made out of seeds and paper so you don't plant the seeds, you just make a craft out of them. Um, more cut and paste and coloring type things.
And then here, it's finally a scientific type um, study where you get a plant and you look at the root, examine it, and, and here you study stems. So there are very few actual scientific activities put into this book. It is more so um, cut and paste and color type activities that you just use the paper here in the book. And there's more, and I'll mention more on that later. I do want to show you the God's Toolbox chapter, which is the basically the physics. So it talks about the basics of measuring and descriptions, which is very important for documenting. And then they get into motion and energy and gravity and buoyancy and flying. And then I was very, very surprised that they got into um, flying and waves, various types of waves. You have the water waves, you have light waves, and lightning and thunder, so sound versus light. And then you get into microwaves and x-rays and reflection and just light in general. So it was a very robust chapter that I was very impressed with and actually very surprised that they included that in here. And it's because of content and topics like this that you could probably actually use this material up through kindergarten and first grade, depending on the kid. I know that might turn off some first graders to say that they're using a preschool curriculum. But if you look at a traditional textbook, science is actually very sparse, not very meaty for first through third grade. You don't learn a whole lot in the traditional textbook. So that's why I say you could use this for kindergarten and first grade, depending on your kid, depending on your situation, um, just because the topics they go through in here are actually very wide and very in-depth for this age level. Next up, we've got chocolate and the like, the point in the video where I eat some chocolate while I ask you to support this video by bumping that like button and helping it spread to more people. Today's chocolate is brownie brittle from Costco. We have looked through the curriculum, so now let's get to what I call the fast facts. First up, how much does it cost? It is actually fairly affordable, around $40 if you buy it new. Are there any hidden costs? Yes, the supplies that you need to do all the activities, but many of them you can find around your house. Is there a way to make it cheaper? Yes, I'm glad you asked. All the activities in the back that are designed to be ripped out or drawn in the book photocopy them. I did that with my son, so now I am able to use this again for my daughter later on, and when we're done, I can resell this and actually probably get a fairly good price because it is designed to be disposable. Second question, what family or kid will this work best for? Definitely a Christian family. This is a science curriculum that is heavily immersed and entangled with God's word. So if you're looking for something secular or just on the border, this probably will not work for you. You can also not do this independently or have your kid do this independently because it's designed for preschool. Preschoolers are not really capable of being independent. So that is out if you want something a little bit more self-exploring. And then finally, it is very, very easy to do. It is pre-planned. You do not have to do any footwork. It is open and go and read it. There is no set schedule. So if you want something more structured for you, um, this will not work for you. It is all based on your time for the day and what your kid's interested in and the attention span it's capable of. So that is the bonus there. It is very, very flexible. That ties right into the third question. How much time does it take? However much it, you want. Um, it is incredibly flexible. So you can set it up to go through it in a 12 month period. For us, we went through it faster, probably around three months. And if I'm going to be very honest with myself, my son would have preferred to be a one month period just because that is how he works. Now we did about a third of the activities. So once again, you can pick and choose the activities you wanna do. A lot of them were cut and paste and coloring type things, which to me was busy work. And he had other sources for the cut and paste and coloring. And, and all that. So um, yeah, you make it what you want it and spend as much time as you want with it. Fourth question, what kind of learner is this good for? I would say kinesthetic and auditory. 
not so much the visual and and here's why because when you get to a page like this about hearing the photos are not very helpful or descriptive of how the ear works to hear same thing with smell and you see that a lot there's a photo that has something to do with what you're talking about but it doesn't help further understanding if i can say it that way they're more just things something for your kid to look at for for a lot of them i don't think they help further understanding so, so it's not very good for a visual learner not like so many of the amazing picture books out there would be fifth question ease of use is it open and go yes unless you're going to do one of the activities there is no prep work there is no planning there's no extra things you have to get to to sit down and read with your kid um and um the supplies needed for the most part are in the book um unless you want to photocopy or it's something you can easily find in your kitchen for the most part so the book itself the reading portion is open and go but when you get to the activities there's a little bit of footwork you have to do to be ready for that number six are there any cons to this curriculum yes there are as i mentioned the photos are not that phenomenal so i would say that is something they could definitely improve on um, to help your kids engage better or understand what they're learning about better another con is it's not what I would expect a typical three-year-old to be able to understand and enjoy. I mentioned the um, I mentioned the God's Toolbox chapter. That the concept of gravity and forces and light waves it's probably beyond the understanding of many two and three-year-olds out there, which is what we consider preschool. For five-year-olds, it depends on the kid. So a majority of the book, yes, is definitely understandable by your typical three-year-old, but there's some more challenging concepts at the end. But then again, all textbooks kind of put the hardest stuff at the end. So it could be a con for you, depending on your kid. Now, the third con for me was actually a pretty big con. I was hoping for some more actual science activities, not so much the preschool, let's do an art project activity. I was hoping for some actual science experiments like you would find with the series Exploring Creation. They had a couple of those, but not as many as I would like. So if you're wanting to do true science and not so much a preschool art focused book, this may not be good enough for you. Okay, final question. Yes, I talk about giftedness on this channel. So is this curriculum good for a gifted kid? It could be. Um, I just found out about my son's giftedness when I got this and I had really wanted to try it before we got into some of the older science books. So we went through it fast, faster than they um, probably would have considered you capable of going through. I would say, as, as I said, we probably could have gone through it much faster. Um, so just be aware to increase the pace for your kids. Another thing I would probably consider dropping is a lot of the activities, which would be just busy work for most of your gifted kids. Like this activity 3.1 for the astronomy section. This is a game where you're supposed to cut out a whole bunch of these and then do a, a matching game with the planet names um, and various other space things. My son knew all the names of the planets before we started this. So busy work right there. One other thing to consider, which if you have a gifted kid, you know this, to start earlier. So I started this book when my son was three and a half to four, somewhere in that range. I could have done this when he was three um, and it would have been perfect for him. So yes, it works for the gifted kid, but you definitely need to make some modifications. Hope that was helpful for you guys. If you got more questions, drop them down in the comments. I am making a review of this, so stay tuned to watch for that to come out, as well as the other exploring science books that we've been doing from Apologia.